With around 2.5 million hectares of public native forest and plantations, Forest New South Wales, part of the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries, is always on the lookout for the most effective and efficient way to manage forests. Technology is increasingly being used to map forest features, assess wildfire damage and forest health, estimate timber yield and calculate carbon stored in forests. This video showcases the work of Dr Russell Turner, a remote sensing specialist who is leading the way in the use of laser technology to create three-dimensional images of forests which are so detailed individual trees can be assessed. I'm uh, Dr Russell Turner, I'm a forester who specialises in remote sensing and my work involves project management for large remote sensing studies for uh, foresters in the field. And i based mostly in Sydney but I occasionally get out to, for field trips across the state to do surveys in forests. As a remote sensing specialist, I project manage large remote sensing studies and I supply the foresters or forest managers with information that they need to make decisions. So they might want to know where the wood volume is for harvesting, they might want to know where the forest might be unhealthy for treatment, and they might want to know where the bushfire risk is for doing hazard reduction burning programs. Okay, remote sensing is the process of capturing data about an object from a distance. So for example, if you take a photo of somebody, you're capturing a, photo, a snapshot of that person, you're collecting information about them, such as their age, their location, their mood, their hair colour, and then that information can be used to extract attributes, say for forestry, from a forestry point of view, we could find out information about the forest by taking a snapshot of the forest. Okay, well forests are growing and living things, so they're constantly changing, whether it's from harvesting a disturbance or storm or bushfire, things are always changing in the forest, it's always growing. So there's always a need to collect new information about what's happening in the forest. So remote sensing provides a, a, a rapid way of collecting that for the foresters and having the up-to-date information on the forest enables them to do better management decisions later on. Well, any information the forester will need for his management decision is, is an application. So basically things like where, we, where the wood's located, uh, is the forest healthy, um, where is the is unique fauna habitat that needs to be protected, uh, what information for harvest planning and when you have to work out where the roads are going to go, where you have to protect the streams and creeks, and uh, information like bushfire risk assessment where you need to know where the dangerous zones are that need treatment. So all sorts of spatial information about forest attributes are the kind of things that you can use for remote sensing. So a wide range of sources. There's local knowledge from talking to experienced staff. They can often use existing maps uh, and GIS um, images. Uh, they can also be using um, field surveys to actually go in the field and, and take measurements of trees, etc. And we, for a long time we've used aerial photography to take a snap of the forest and then we can use that to map the forest out and do vegetation classification and, and locate the roads etc. But the trouble is with all these traditional techniques is they're very labour intensive and costly so there's always a need to try and find new ways of doing things. Doing surveys tends to have a small amount of data and a small area, a fraction of the forest whereas remote sensing, because it covers the whole forest, you get the big picture in one go. And some remote sensing techniques like airborne laser scanners can directly measure the attributes of the forest, how big the trees are, uh, their spatial arrangement. So there's things you can measure from above that you can't derive from ground surveys. So it has advantages in many ways. Well, a laser scanner is uh, similar to the scanner you have in your shopping center, just a laser, but it's mounted upside down in an aircraft and it, it's fired on a zigzag pattern beneath the aircraft. As the aircraft flies over the forest, it's firing each laser pulse up to 200,000 pulses per second um, at the speed of light down to the forest. And each time the pulse interacts with an object, either the tree canopy or the ground, some of the energy returns back to the sensor. And that's recorded as a point in, X, in, in 3D space as an X, Y and Z coordinate. And then these large point clouds that we generate can then be used to extract tree height information. This is an example of uh, raw LIDAR data, or airborne laser scanner data, for an area of pine plantation down in southwest New South Wales. And this is an area that's two kilometres by two kilometres, and what we're seeing is millions and millions of laser pulses that were recorded for that mission. 
So what I'll do now is zoom into a, a section of forest. And as we get closer, we can start to see the little points of, of laser pulse data. And I'll just switch this to 3D. And now we can see those points in X, Y, Z space, showing us the vertical and horizontal structure of the forest. And if I zoom in just a tad bit more, we'll start to see individual trees there. And you can see the large amount of information that's being captured on each tree. And the ground strikes are all scattered in blue down below and the tallest points of the tree are up here. So it's quite a powerful visual tool for seeing the structure of the forest. I've got three major projects at the moment. I'm looking at the white cypress pine plant of forests in near Baradine in northwest New South Wales. There's about 240,000 hectares of forest there and we're doing wood volume assessment in those native forests. The second project is in a pine plantation, about another 5,000 hectares down near Tumut, southwest uh, New South Wales and that involves, uh, again, inventory uh, studies with that one. And the third one is looking at LIDAR, or airborne laser scanners, for uh, mapping purposes for harvest planning. So we're mapping creek lines and we're predicting where the larger trees are for harvesting purposes. So they're pretty diverse and stretched across the, uh, the landscape. Oh, it's a very exciting future with remote sensing. The demand will increase because people are becoming more aware of what uh, this stuff is capable of doing. Uh, the more suppliers are becoming available and the products becoming more cheaper and there's more sophisticated ways of processing the data. So in the future we'll see much more use of the remote sensing instruments and it will be, become a mainstream uh, forestry tool.